Hello and welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, I'm Chico and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're actually going to be playing Genshin Impact, but we're not going to be playing on the account that I plan on doing my playthrough on. We're actually going to be playing on my main account, which I started a little bit after Genshin actually released. I actually wanted to do this because I cannot yet play through Windbloom on my alt account and I do want to get some content up for Windbloom. I have not done the store yet and that's what this video is going to be. So <laughs> I hope that you guys will enjoy it and I'm going to go ahead and get into it. I have my little Farz on here, I love her so much. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and head to Mondstadt and see what Windbloom has in store for us this year. So we'll go ahead and do that now. I'm really excited for this. I really thoroughly enjoyed Windbloom last time. I was actually a little bit worried that when I opened I was going to be in Mondstadt and that the Windbloom would trigger. <laughs> Fortunately, I am not in the city of Mondstadt. So we'll go ahead and just... Maybe we'll just teleport here and then we'll walk in. <laughs> Alright, here we are. Since I have Faros on, there really is no reason not to get some chicken on the way. Or some fowl. I don't know. I always call it chicken, because it looks like a chicken wing, you know? There we go. Sorry, Timmy. What a wonderful Windbloom Timmy must be having now. Because you know what everybody does when they come to Windbloom. Well, when they come to Monsat. Maybe I should go ahead and put Lumine in my party. I I do play Lumine on my main account and my alt account just because I like Lumine's playstyle better than Ether's. I have a lot of characters also on my main this account. World is full of unsolved. When we do special events, I always try to do um, Lumine, but look how pretty. Okay, it's... Oh, okay, there it is. I knew it was going to automatically start. Hey there, Catherine. Good day, you two. It's nice to see you here at this festive time. So, got any jobs for us? Hmm. <laughs> I'm afraid I'd struggle to find you any commissions in the near future. With the arrival of the Windbloom Festival, the only task most Mondstadters are busy with is preparing gifts for their loved ones, but it's customary to do this oneself without assistance. Think of this period as the off-season for the Mondstadt branch of the Adventurers Guild. Windbloom is basically like Valentine's Day. It makes so much sense. <laughs> Spring is here, love is in the air, and everyone wants to relax and enjoy themselves. Even the cats at the tavern next door have been getting lovey-dovey with one another recently. Aw, I love cats. We have, we have quite a few cats at my home. Paimon is so savage. That is rude. Cats deserve love too. You know that feeling you get when you burst out the doors after a nice <laughs> nap, hoping to make it to the store before the limited edition drinks sell out, only to get there just in time to see the last two glasses snatched away right from under your nose by a couple of pesky lovebirds? <sighs> That's what this feels like. That's very specific of you, Paimon. <laughs> Perhaps you two could simply take this chance to... Traveler! Paimon! Thank goodness I found you. Um, there's something I need your help with. I love when we get to see Sucrose. We did not get to see her for the longest time. We've only seen her in a handful of events. But she's so adorable and she deserves more screen time. Whoa! Sucrose? Whoa, Sucrose? Go ahead, Sucrose. We don't have anything else to do right now anyway. Paimon, why didn't you ask first? Phew. Okay. Here's the situation. I've been appointed as the Windbloom Festival Special Ambassador by the Knights of Favonius this year. Ooh, what an honor. My task is to do good deeds for people during this festival of gratitude and love. Nice one! So how did they decide who to appoint anyway? They spun an empty bottle donated by Angel Share inside a circle with all <laughs> our names on it. Whoever's name the bottle stopped at got chosen. This method seems a bit arbitrary. I think so too. But everyone.
Everyone said that it was to make it fair, so everyone had an equal chance to become the special ambassador. I mean, I guess that is fair. The thing is, I'm not great at dealing with people, so I was really daunted by it at first. But I'm still glad that I got this role. I think this is going to be a nice change for Sucrose. And give her a boost of confidence, maybe. She's so shy. She deserves to be able to go out and speak to people and speak her mind. And get to know people and make bonds. Luckily, I came up with a way to spur myself on, which has helped. Have a look. Oh, um, what's that for, Sucrose? Is that a test? <laughs> yep, every time I do a good deed for someone... I get them to breathe into a test tube. That way, I can collect everyone's breaths of joy. That's... <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. That's that's pretty creepy. I don't... Uh, I mean, if they do it willingly, I guess that's fair. Sounds fascinating. Right. <laughs> Are you gonna use them in your research? I mean, what else? Yes. I believe these breaths of joy will serve as valuable raw materials for our chemical transmutation. With any luck, I'll be able to produce something truly miraculous. Like an extra sweet, sweet flower? Mm. Mm. Sorry, no, I'm unhealthy. <laughs> Sorry. Wait, you're doing this on purpose, are you? <laughs> Actually, I meant something even more exciting than that. I can't say for sure until I have more test results to confirm my hypothesis, though. Alchemists mustn't make claims they can't live up to. Anyway, I'm still missing one final breath of joy. Oh, is that all you need help with? That's easy. Just treat Paimon to a sweet madam. Then you'll get your last breath of joy. Paimon, be serious. Hey, come on! Paimon's doing her best to help, okay? <sighs> so, does it need to be more like official or ceremonious or something? No, joy isn't measured in those terms at all. Well, let me put it this way. Have you ever planted a fruit seed and cared for it while it grows? In the same way that those tender, sweet fruits are the product of your time and effort, the amount of joy derived from an experience is positively correlated to the degree of hardship overcome during it. For example, in my case, I would say that to experience a statistically significant amount of joy, I'd have to do something like spend six months developing a medicine formula to a point where it was finally consistently effective. Similarly, in order to collect a significant amount of joy from other people, I have to find ways to do something sufficiently challenging on their behalf. Oh, kind of gets it now. Long story short, you want us to help you find people for you to help. Oh, that's pretty tough given that it's the Wimbloom Festival and all. Oh, I figured since you're such experienced travelers, you might have some ideas. But if even you don't know how to approach this... Don't worry, leave this to me. Really? You have a plan? Well, oh, if she I did it, not read that. will help you. With the talking, anyway. Oh yeah, we know that. Could not have MC talk at all. But, um, if things don't work out, can Paimon still get that sweet madame? No. Oh, come on, Traveler. This is a festival of gratitude and love, after all. How could you refuse? Easily. Excuse me, Sucrose. Could I borrow you for a second? Package for you. Oh, there we go. Well, actually, she's not helping. She's just giving a package. Oh, sure. Okay. Be right back. Look at that face. Look at them bug eyes. Paimon, quit being nosy. Wait, is that who Paimon thinks it is? Kale. When did she arrive at Mondstadt? Let's go say <laughs> hi. Paimon is truly so nosy. It's okay. It's okay. We do love her. She is cute and annoying. Kale, I'm here. <laughs> hey guys, what are the chances? You were staring into space just now. Something the matter? Um, <laughs> no, don't worry. I'm fine. I was just looking at a Mondstadt children's book in the souvenir shop over there. 
While I was flipping through it, a piece of paper fell out. The writing on it was really mysterious. Almost like a prophecy. Like a prophecy, huh? If you can do these things, you may light the lantern of utmost joy and receive a supreme blessing. I love how she read that, the detail. Okay, Kale is learning from Tainari academics. And I just love how she kind of read that and struggled a little bit or like did her best, if that makes sense. I don't know how to explain it, but we'll move on, we'll move on. And what does these things refer to? Find a flower that is not of this world. Find a guide who will never get lost. Oh. Find one who would never lie. Find a legend that never ends. That is suspicious. You're saying you found this in a children's book. What book was it? What is the book called? Find a flower not of this world. Uh, maybe, I don't know, like the internet. Find a guide. Paimon? Who doesn't lie? Is it me? I would never lie. Anyway, we'll move on. <laughs> so, four things in total. Here, have a look. I asked the lady who owns the store about it. But she said that she didn't know anything about any paper slips. Oops. <laughs> Hi there. Sorry to butt in, but what's the name of that storybook you just mentioned? Thank you for asking. Paimon, you were supposed to be doing the talking. You're always nosy. Why didn't you ask this time? Does it sound familiar to you? Oh, <laughs> it was called The Boar Princess. Of course. Of course it was. That is strange. I've read that book, and it sounds like that note you found has no relation to the story at all. Um... Do you know her? Stranger danger! That is the vibes that I just got from Kale. Listen, you can be okay with sucrose. You guys are basically, like, the same. <laughs> You're both super shy. You can vibe together. With the Knights of Avonius. And Sucrose, meet Kale. She's a trainee forest ranger from Samaro Davidia Forest. Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, hi. Oh my gosh, this is so awkward. Uh, mm -mm. This is me in real life. Uh, this is getting awkward fast. So, <laughs> Sucrose. What are your thoughts on this prophecy? Could it be real? I, um, without having done any research, I couldn't comment definitively. Aww. Um, but if you want my subjective opinion, I don't think that it's a nasty prank or anything. Why not? The only people who read children's books are those with a childlike wonder and imagination. Or children, of course. I'm sure that whoever put this prophecy there would understand that. Would they really do this just to spread lies and ruin someone's innocence? I can't imagine anyone being so cruel. That's a great take! I love it! Exactly! Who would want to hurt a child's feelings? You. Okay, so... What do you think the blessing is, Sucros? Hmm... Um... If I had to guess... Maybe a fairy that can make people's wishes come true or something? I haven't read many fairy tales, so this is pure speculation. With no other information on hand or prior research to compare against, I'm afraid it might not even be worth considering. Wow! Her guesswork is really good, though. I want to pick her brain some more. But will she find it annoying if I keep asking her questions? We've only just met, after all. Aww, what's the best thing to say to someone you're meeting for the first time? Would you like to get the Lantern of Utmost Joy? Uh, well, <laughs> yes. I, I mean, if possible. Then, what would you wish for, Kale? Um, I'd wish for a... Aww. A better personality. That is so sad. You are perfect. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. 
have some confidence. I hope she grows through this. I hope that the people in Monset help her once again and that she is able to grow. And her and Sucrose, I hope they become good friends and grow together because they both need it. Uh-huh. Exactly. We don't always agree with Paimon, but today we do. That's very kind of you. Uh, but if you know me like I do... Carly! Sometimes the people around you know you better than you know yourself, and they see the true value in you. Don't ever forget that. If you know somebody you're very close to, they probably love you just the way you are, and you do not have to change for anybody, and you can grow to love yourself, with encouragement, compassion, and you can be happy. I know that voice! It's... Aww. <laughs> Kale! Oh. You made good time, huh? Way earlier than I expected. I spotted your green hair way off in the distance. <laughs> good thing my eyes are sharp, or I'd have missed you. Amber! Have you been doing well? Did you... Finish all the pita pockets I brought you last time? What do you mean brought you last time? When did you see her last? Why why didn't we know about it? You bet. They're getting yummier each time you make them. Huh? Wait, remind Raymond, have you been to Monstat before? Mm-hmm. A long time ago, I had a lot of help from a lot of people here in Monstat. So ever since my Elizar got better. I've been looking out for an opportunity to come back to Mondstadt and tell them all the news that I've been cured. Good for you. <sighs> Thanks. If it's okay with everyone, why don't I take Kale for a walk around town? I'd like to show her some of the places she didn't get to see last time. That's a good idea. Of course. Fine by me. Sure, go right ahead. I, uh... Um... Sorry, Amber. I agreed to meet my traveling companions by the city gate in a few minutes, so... I can't go with you just yet. <laughs> please, please take everybody to meet them. Oh, that's alright. In that case, you guys go rest up, and I'll go see Master Jean to ask for some time off. Oh, okay. Traveler Sucrose, could you look after Kale for now? I'll come get her later and take her out. There's still a whole bunch of people I need to introduce her to. Sure, no problem. You can count on us. Awesome. See you later then. Um... Oh no, she's so depressed. You all right there, Kale? You look kind of disappointed. <sighs> I'm just feeling a little shy today. Don't worry about me. Amber wants to introduce me to more of her friends. Am I going to be able to cope? I love that they made her so realistic. I've only met Sucro so far, and I'm already struggling to make conversation. I wish I had a little more self-confidence. Then I'd find it much easier to make friends with people. Ah, it's nearly time! Let's go to the gate and see if they've arrived. Okay, I guess we are going with you. Is Sucrose coming? I don't know. Wee. <laughs> okay, sorry. That was awkward. Nice shot of Celestia up there. Why is this humble windmill such a great view? <laughs> I mean, it's understandable. It must have been a long time since you last came to Mondstadt. Because it is the true great Vayu Viastra. Oh my gosh. <sighs> oh, come on. Don't tell me you don't get it. View, Vayu, and also Mahamatra, Vayu Viastra. No? Kainari, Sino, over here! Honestly, that one was, that was very bad. That was bad. Anyway. I'm really excited to be able to see more between the two of these guys and with Kale, since they're all so close. I love their relationship so much. Whew, am I glad to see you. <laughs> and who's this young lady? Master, this is Sucrose. 
an alchemist with the Knights of Favonius. We just met. Zekros, this is my teacher, Tainari. He's a highly respected forest watcher in Sumeru, and he's also a very famous botanist. Always exaggerating. I'm Tainari. Pleased to meet you. <sighs> so you have a teacher as well. The pleasure is all mine, Tainari, sir. Yep, he's extremely knowledgeable, too. And this is General Mahamatra Sino of the Sumeru Academia. He's really famous in Sumeru as well. Greetings. Though if I might say so, we're purely mm -hmm. here for personal reasons. You needn't be unduly concerned with our official positions. And Kale, there's no need to use my full title. Sino is fine. Or sir, if you absolutely must. Indeed. We're not here in an official capacity. Just to keep Kale company on her vacation. Keep me company? Then it was you two that insisted on coming! <laughs> Look, I know that everybody is not going to agree with this, but Sino and Tainari are definitely like Kale's parents. Definitely guardians, of course. Kale is very important to us. We felt obliged to ensure her safety on the long, treacherous journey to Mondstadt. I've been here on my own loads of times before! <laughs> what about your work, though? What if something bad happens while the General Mahamatra is away? There should be no issues. I have left my duties in the hands of my subordinates, and two especially reliable helpers. Dia is a Dia. And I'll hate them. Oh, Sucrose! What were you saying about you having a teacher as well? I was just going to mention that I think we're in a somewhat similar situation. I'm an assistant to Mr. Albedo, Mondstadt's genius alchemist. They really are very similar. Oh, please, Sucros. Genius is an unnecessary <gasps> Albedo! Epithet. It will serve only to leave an exaggerated impression of me in the minds of our guests. Albedo is so humble. Yeah. M Mr. Albedo, but it is an objective truth. Hey, Albedo's here too! Great! The more the merrier! Hmm. So tell me, Sucrose, since your specialty is bioalchemy, what do you know about the antitoxic properties of the Calaverly? Wait, wait! Can we hold off on the nerdy topic for now? I like how you want to be left out. Paimon, you should take this opportunity to learn something, okay? Oh, as it happens, I've studied the Kalalili in quite some detail before, with it being a species native to Mondstadt. I wrote a whole report on my findings. If you're interested, Mr. Tainari, sir, I can go get it for you. <sighs> We're supposed to be here on vacation, and you're already thinking about how to improve your herbal medicines? Also... I thought we'd agreed to take on new identities for this trip. New identities? Are you on a honeymoon? Listen. Sino. I know that you just don't want Tainari to go and get close to Sucrose because they share interests together and you'll feel lonely. Don't lie. What new identities? Mine was Adventurer Sino. Skilled desert explorer. <laughs> Tainari's was technological consultant to the treasure hoarders. And Kali's was traveling musician. What? Uh, and you find that sort of roleplay fun? Very much so. Oh my gosh. Look at that straight, dead face, too. I do wish some of the less cautious adventurers in the Avidya Forest would consider coming to Mondstadt instead. What Palermo mushrooms lack in texture, they make up for in not causing vomiting or diarrhea. That's TMI. <laughs> Are you contemplating using some compounds from the calla lily as active ingredients in a targeted antidote? Yes, I gathered a few on the way here, and my initial research suggests to me that it could be worth a try. Okay, I got it, but as much as I don't wish to be a wet blanket, it takes a huge amount of experimental data to conclusively prove how different drugs interact. Estimating the total development time would be very difficult. Add in the time for procurement and delivery of essential materials, 
And I'm not sure if we could complete development before you need to return. <laughs> are you sketching or are you writing notes? What are you doing? Then please, allow me to help. Mr. Albedo. Apologies for my tardy entrance in the present discussion. I understand you're looking to make an antidote for poisonous fungi, correct? If you happen to have some samples with you, or relevant documentation on hand, perhaps you might give me the chance to review them later. But before that, I invite the three of you to look at this. Oh no, should I read this? Accommodations, one of Mr. Goss' other properties, priority, the Adventurer's Guild reception area, backup plan to be confirmed, food, group meals on the first day, following which all are free to make their own arrangements amidst the city's various restaurants and taverns. Self-catering facilities will be prepared at lodgings, outdoor activities, considering our guests' sightseeing interests. Sucrose, Timaeus, myself, and the other Knights of Thelonious can accompany our guests, splitting, up, splitting in groups where necessary, obtaining souvenirs, multiple collection methods with wind comes glory, the outdoors themselves, creation through alchemy, and handcrafting all are all possibilities. Scientific observations. Scientific observations, emphasis on botany. Official business, no such needs at this moment. What? Food and lodging arrangements? Were you quietly writing this up the whole time? Paimon didn't even notice! Impressive multitasking. Hardly. Rather, I should apologize for interrupting a serious discussion between trained professionals, especially after they've traveled so far to be here, when I myself am neither an adventurer, nor a technological consultant, nor a musician. Nevertheless, I would encourage you to have a knowledgeable local arrange your detailed itinerary while you're in Mondstadt. Take a look. And should you find anything here to be objectionable, it can easily be adjusted. This is too kind of you. These arrangements are quite excellent. It looks great! Even Paimon feels like tagging along for the food and board. You're not included in this itinerary. That's why it's called tagging along! Very comprehensive. The adventurer, technological consultant, and musician I'll approve. Just one thing. We'd like the chance to cook as well. Why don't we change the group dinner to a camping and cooking trip? I'll help pitch the tents! I can help too. Um, and Paima will take her to Good Hunter to order some <laughs> starters! Mondstadt's cold cut platter is not to be missed! Nice idea. Great, then it's decided. Sucrose and I will bring the three of you to your inn for a quick rest. You too. Why did I do that? I have no idea why I just did that. Sometimes I get a little bit too trigger happy and I just press buttons. I apologize. Hey Sarah, can we have a cold cut platter to go? Sure, coming right up. Would you like anything else? Um, do we, uh, want anything else? <laughs> That'll be all. Um, okay. You know what? Let's have a sweet madame as well. <gasps> Yay! You're the best person in the whole wide world! Paimon will give you the sweet flower from that sweet madame as a wind bloom. Just don't ruin your appetite for later. <laughs> no need to worry about that! Paimon can make room for good food. <laughs> Alright, just a moment. Oh, mm, that was great. If that was a windbloom treat, then Paima wishes it could be the Windbloom Festival every day. Okay, this is really cute and fun. I love that we're all camping together. All right, looks like we're all here. We're not late, are we? Not at all. We just came early to set everything up, since we happen to be free today. Holly put up the tent so quickly, but still managed to tie very sturdy knots. You can really tell that she's a professional. I didn't do much apart from passing materials around. <laughs> thanks. It's all thanks to Master and Sino. They taught me everything I know. What can I say? For a skilled adventurer, this is just another day on the job. <sighs> Are you quite finished? Or were you going to sing each other's praises till the moon rises? Come on, let's all sit down. Oh, That's why so didn't nice. I do that? That was really very good. I didn't watch you cook it, but I believe that the prominent umami flavor of the dish owes itself to more than the fish alone. That's correct. Any further deductions? Let me think. The aroma was quite uniform, unlike that of a spice blend. 
It was also unfamiliar to me. So I would venture that it was a Mondstadt specialty. So you're... As far as edible Mondstadt plant species are concerned, Chala lilies are usually used in soups. So if I had to guess... Anyway, what I was trying to say before I was interrupted was, what are you, some kind of culinary specialist now? Small lamp grass? That's right. I've long heard that Sumeru's fish with cream sauce is noted for its gentle texture, which brings out the tenderness of the fish. Here in Mondstadt, oh, we're not quite as varied in the use of spices as in Sumeru, but the principle of bringing certain distinct flavors to the forefront through combinations of natural ingredients is oh, very much the same. I liked it a lot. I'm curious as to the exact ratio of ingredients. That line seems so out of place. I liked it a lot. Okay. I'll write a copy of the recipe for you. <laughs> that was that was so funny. Okay. Would anyone like to try the nutrient dense meal I made? I'll have some. What about you, Kale? It doesn't look like you've eaten very much. Is your appetite low at the moment? Uh, no. I just don't eat a lot normally. Hmm. Um, sorry. I didn't mean to make things awkward. Tainari. While we were on the road, we spotted something white walking on two legs. Was that Paimon? Which day was this? Just after passing <laughs> through Stonegate. Was that Paimon? Hmm. Uh, Taino, are you sure your eyes were working that day? Or maybe your head was blocking your vision? Paimon, are you sus? Paimon always flies. There's no way she'd ever walk. Oh. Well, aren't you privileged? Hmm. Is that right? I thought that you'd made me snacked on too many local ground nuts. No. What? <sighs> <laughs> what were those legs? No. Not funny. No. Ground, you know, as in ground up, but also the ground. Ground nuts make you fall to the ground. Is no one gonna interject? <sighs> Think of this as part of the process of getting to know Sino. On uh, the bright side, these jokes show that he thinks of you as his friends. Still, we could test the hypothesis. What hypothesis? That plant species indigenous to Mondstadt may have an effect on the motor functions of flying life forms. Hey! Paimon's not your test subject! He could be. Anyway, by your logic, wouldn't that mean that eating, say, Saitun peaches? That would make a sick Paimon peachy in no time or something. I say we put these theories to the test. Traveler and Paimon's conversations are more entertaining than Sino's jokes. That's not true. Ah, I see. You must have been keeping quiet about this grievance for quite some time now. You seem much cheerier now that you're here at Mondstadt, Sino. Actually, feels like you're a completely different person. That's because I'm Sino the Adventurer. That's not funny. Hmm? It's not? And Ferris, you only saw him in his work mode while you were in Sumeru. He's actually like this most of the time when he's in a good mood. Yep, it's true. Sometimes when he's eating, he'll grumble about how the bowl is too shallow for the amount of food it contains and other random stuff like that. I understand. Then allow me to reintroduce myself. Before, you knew me as General Mahamatra Sino. Now... Please see me as Sino, the adventurer. Oh, if that's what you want. <sighs> yeah, so that's another thing he does. He'll keep repeating something he thinks is funny until you stop trying to resist. Hmm. So you have two different mental states? Almost like different phases of matter. Interesting. I want to learn to do that too. No. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> I think in your case... The two states we would end up with would be 
highly conscientious sucrose and <laughs> stupefied sucrose. Oh, well, by the way, was there any reason in particular that you chose Mondstadt as your destination on this occasion? Oh, well, Lisa once told me that the Windbloom Festival is one of Mondstadt's biggest events of the year. I wanted to take this opportunity to give everyone a Windbloom as a token of my heartfelt gratitude for everything they've done to look after me. Plus, it was a good chance for Kala to get out and meet some new people. Did she want to meet new people, though? Kale, Lily. <laughs> what? Kale's wind bloom. Maybe she should call it a Kale Lily. It sounds very Mondstadt. <laughs> Sinari. Sinari? <laughs> okay. Um. Tainari. <laughs> anyway, stop looking at him like that. Stop looking away. Don't give him side eye. That was actually. That's cute. Kale Lily is cute. There's also Kale Flower, which would technically make more sense. But somehow, it doesn't sound as nice. Okay. <laughs> no, it sounded pretty good. That's also cute. Moving swiftly on. Wow. He just completely ignored the joke and carried on the conversation. Uh, guess sometimes that's the only way forward. Sumeru's been through some major changes recently, and things at work have only just started to calm down. I don't get many opportunities to take a vacation, and this was a chance to join Kali on her trip while also learning a few things about Mondstadt's flora and fauna that I'll be able to pass on to my peers and students on my return. Two birds with one stone. How about you, Sino? I came to ensure Kali's safety. That's just an excuse. Plain and simple. Also, there's the matter of a genius invocation TCG custom made card back. Oh. Aha! So you did have an ulterior motive. Have you all played genius invocation TCG before? I have. And that is why I am proud to call you my friend. Oh, thank you. When I first began contemplating getting a new card back, I asked around before eventually deciding to ask the legendary Mr. Kaltz for guidance. A friend of mine, Sawada. Whom I played cards with on occasion, had been to Inazuma for the Irodori festival. He told me that Kaltz was a monstatter, so I should try my luck there. This is definitely what what a coincidence that Albedo just randomly happened to walk across that bridge at that exact moment where we were talking. And you wanted to meet Kaltz. You're in luck. Kaltz? Uh is it that You mean he's a friend of yours? No. I see. So, you came to Mondstadt in search of Calx. No, that is inaccurate. <laughs> I came here principally to protect Kale. He most certainly did not. Kale's been here on the quiet numerous times, and this is the first time he felt the need to join. Oh yeah? Maybe it's because you came. Not only me. Same applies to you too, doesn't it? <laughs> If my writer friend were here now, I'm sure he would describe this curious coincidence as having the makings of a good story. I and love- It's always a pleasure oh. to meet a fan. Okay, I jumped the gun there. I love that they are incorporating more of the interactions and the friendships that we've seen because he's definitely talking about Sing Cho. Anyway, we'll carry on. Oh, here he comes. Wait, <laughs> you mean you're Mr. Calx? Having my new friends address me by my pen name feels uh, somewhat unusual. Please, just call me Albedo. Huh. So you're Calx. Sayo's been talking about you nonstop recently. He's intent on getting you to design a bespoke card back for him. Do we get a card back? Uh, you didn't have to say all that. Oh, now he's getting shy. I don't usually take private commissions, but I believe that we are friends now. All of us. Our conversations have been deep and interesting. And Sino, your passion for this game is indeed one of a kind. I can see it in your eyes. 
Obviously. And given that you've come all this way from Sumeru to see me, I'd be quite honored to take this commission. Wow, your teacher's so nice. I feel the same about yours. Um, well, they definitely have different personalities, but they're similar when it comes to their character. So? How much should I budget for the timeless masterpiece you will produce for me? Surely, timeless masterpiece is something of an overstatement. Are we all going to sleep in that same tent? Like, we're all just going to sleep together in that one tent? I, I just saw the tent and just had to, like, you know, think about that. That's cool. Any artwork fit to appear on the reverse of my card decks is by definition a timeless masterpiece. Even if I do say so myself. Don't mind him. These TCG nut jobs are all like this. I see. So, this has an almost religious significance. <laughs> well, for starters, I'd like to hear a few more of your jokes. No, you don't. Uh, my jokes? You like them? Oh my gosh. That line delivery was perfect. I do. Really? I didn't see you laughing. Could you even imagine well, him? Well, the joke's ability to induce laughter is a separate matter. But I certainly find them fun. They are fun. Because, you know, he's having a good time. And secretly, everybody likes to hear them because they like to see their friend enjoying themselves. So, they are fun. They are not funny. Most of the time. If I might interrupt, does anyone else smell something strange? Sucrose, what did you cook? Uh, my nutritional meal. <laughs> Will it be okay? Should we go over and take a look too? Uh, of course you want to go. <sighs> Only the base is burned. We can still use the cooking pot. It just needs a bit of a wash. Good thing Tainari's nose is so sharp. Has he been in this kind of situation a lot before? Don't let it get you down, Sucrose. <sighs> I know, it's just... I'm sorry to disappoint Sino. I guess we'll have to do this again another day. Oh, yes. I'm not sure if you've noticed. Kali seems a little... depressed. I noticed she was in a low mood when everyone was talking. I get that feeling as well. Remember that note she received? I was just thinking. I want to try solving this riddle and giving Kali the chance to accept the blessing. Oh, yeah! She's the one who needs your help. Exactly. Maybe she'll be willing to breathe into my test tube. But anyway, that can wait. Sucrose, why do you have to make this weird? You didn't need to bring that up. As much as I'd like to make progress in my research, I'd prefer to see her smile. Alright, we'll help out too. You will? Then tell me, honestly, do you think that this prophecy is for real too? I know how I can find out. Uh -huh. Right. I'll be back shortly. All right. Let's meet at the alchemy crafting bench in the city. I've got some thinking to do in the meantime. Are we going to Monarch? No, oh, what a shame. You just missed a joke about windmills. Stop. Please. <laughs> Time. Oh my gosh, Albedo is being a little bit sadistic towards Tainari, and I'm here for it. Keep going. That bad, huh? Hmm. Well, now Paimon really wants to hear it for some reason. Didn't you say you want to see the dragon of the east at some point? When are you going? Tomorrow morning. <laughs> and you? into the mountains to have a stroll and collect a few plants as samples. Oh, or perhaps I could join you? I'll be looking for inspiration for these card back illustrations. Found you! <gasps> Amber and Yola! I knew I was onto something as soon as I saw the fire. You could not have possibly known that that was going to be us. Don't lie. Wow, you have really sharp eyes. That's an outrider for you. Uh-oh. Did we break the fire? safety rules or something? Actually, you didn't. Strictly speaking, you should have reported your plans first. But since two of our very own alchemists are here, 
I'm happy to look the other way. <laughs> Can we just look at how Albedo is looking at Eula? Okay. Yeah, uh, just yes. gonna skip over that. I'm Amber, and this is the Reconnaissance Company Captain Eula, a good friend of mine. Good evening. You are friends of Kale, yes? A pleasure to meet you. Oh, do you know Kale too? Oh, Amber and Eula. The pleasure is ours. I've heard a lot about both of you from color. Oh, really? All positive, I hope. You asked that last time, too. Of course it was positive. I'd say. We hear the latest news about you every time you write to Kale. <laughs> Glad to know we've made a good impression so far. Anyway, we're just here to collect Kale, so don't let us interrupt your chat. Come on, Kale. We're going to take you to check out a few scenic spots. Okay, great. Still as high energy as always. Hmm? You know Amber? Yes, we've met. She's Kali's most important friend. And for that, we are also very grateful to her. <sighs> That's Amber for you. Her outgoing personality means she can make friends with just about anybody. Hmm. Oh. Paimon, shut up! It's getting late. And we still have a lot lined up tomorrow. I suggest we all head back and get some rest. Yes, we should preserve our energy. All right, I'll start packing up. You mean packing up? You're gonna get the tone deaf bard to check out that no, aren't you? Oh, Venti? I guess Venti should know since he's a bard and also he's very old. Anyway, that's right. <laughs> guess Paimon knows you pretty well, huh? Knowing him, he should be hitting the taverns around this time. We can go corner him and make him answer our questions. Let's move. Why would we why did we pitch a tent to tear it down right away? That makes no sense. Oh, it's been a while. I'm on target, tone deaf bard drinking as usual. Put your drink down and get your game face on. We've got some important questions for you, mister. Why are you so aggressive? Uh okay. Exactly. So, what do you make of it? Yeah, any thoughts? <laughs> Aren't you forgetting something? It's the Windbloom Festival right now. You can't just go around asking people for help so blatantly. Uh, well, if you won't tell us the answer, could you at least tell us if this thing's worth a shot? <laughs> Sounds to me like you want a hint or two. And a blessing or two to boot. <laughs> a fine answer. The person who wrote this prophecy is very powerful. If you manage to solve the riddle, good things are sure to happen. Also, I happen to know where this lantern is. Once you've found the four things, I'll even write the location down for you. Isn't that generous of me? <laughs> Whatever. We weren't expecting much from you anyway. Venti, did you write it? You are sus. You can get back to guzzling wine and blowing wind now. Oh, woe is me. Paimon sees me as nothing more than a drunken wastrel. There are actually a great many things that we bards are required to do. <laughs> it just happens that enjoying life is the most important one. Once this is over, would you like to join me for a drink? No. You know, a favor for a favor. Okay, we're going to talk to Sucrose again. Why did I climb this and not just go up the steps? Because I'm saucy like that. A flower that is not of this world. Sucrose! We've got some good news and some bad news. Which would you like to hear first? Um, let's have the bad news first, I guess. Huh? Really? Don't most people usually want to hear the good stuff first? Just get to the point, Paimon. Oh, alright then. Basically, we went to Windrise to divine the breeze. When? When did we do that? The wind Prophecy is real, and the oh. idea is a really good one. That actually, <laughs> I'm so dumb. Okay. That doesn't sound like bad news. So what's the real bad news then? <laughs> uh, Paimon is the bad news. <laughs> yeah. Blame Sino. If it's not funny, then it's his fault. <laughs> it's fine. Well, that puts my mind at rest. Now, back to the other issue I've been mulling over. I was thinking about the flower that is not of this world. It could
could mean a human cultivated variety that doesn't occur in nature. But that's basically claiming that it doesn't come from this world in the first place, when actually it's just a variant of an existing breed. So, the initial question is, can the flower's origins be traced back to a natural organism? If so, it cannot be correctly described as not of this world. But then, supposing we identified something outside of that category, whose job would it be to decide whether it belongs in this world or not? Then the question becomes, do of this world and from this world mean the same thing? Or is it deeper than that? Whoa, whoa, slow down! Prima's head is already starting to spin! This is starting to seem like we're going to get a lot of lore in this Windbloom, and my question is, why do they always do this on limited time events where newer players and certain people don't get to play it? Anyway, we were trying to have a good time, and now we're doing all the scientific research and stuff. I'm here for it. Okay, um, I did have one other line of thought as well. What about a flower created using alchemy? Would that be not of this world? If by that you mean a flower from beyond this world, Albedo did make something like that once. Albedo may know the answer, but asking him right away would be like asking the teacher for the answers to your exam paper. It would render our search for the truth meaningless. I'd rather try and figure this out for myself. Could it be the wind bloom? Oh. Now that you mention it, that's definitely a possibility. The wind bloom doesn't refer to a specific flower. Everyone defines what it means for themselves. In which case, the wind bloom doesn't exist in reality. <sighs> this does seem like a promising direction. I've made a note. Okay, I better go read up on this. Yay! Paimo was actually useful this time! Guess we have that sweet madame to thank, huh? Even a broken clock is right twice a day i'll need some time to prepare could we meet up here in say two days time sure thing in the meantime we'll also think about the other three riddles in the prophecy but uh since we're really going for this now shouldn't we say something to kale about it i originally wanted to leave it as a surprise for her and i also didn't want to get her hopes up over nothing but you're right paimon i'll need to be careful how i word it but I'll try to find some time over the next couple days to mention it to her. Understood. All right. Thanks so much. Okay. So that was part one of Windbloom. I'm very excited to keep going on. I'm not going to do any of the specific mini games in this video. It is getting a little lengthy, so I think I am going to go ahead and end it off here. Let me know what you guys think of day one from Wind Bloom. I, for one, am, again, very excited to see where this is going. I hope we get some nice and juicy lore. Maybe it's not something super mind-blowing, but it seems a little strange with the little poem there. It's a little coincidental that it sounds somewhat like our story and our journey. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe, turn on that notification bell so you're always notified. And I hope that you have a great night or day wherever you are.